The Witcher Adventure Game is a game of mystery, danger and questing for two to four players. Take the role of one of four beloved characters from the best-selling novels and award-winning video games. You'll travel the world, braving vicious, bloodthirsty monsters and gold-grubbing men. Unravel webs of deceit and solve problems both royal and rural, magic and seemingly mundane to complete various quests around the Witcher's world. As you play, you'll craft a story of your adventures, complete with side quests and surprising twists. Will you be able to uncover the most valuable information and have a greater impact on the world of the Witcher than your opponents? In the Witcher adventure game, two to four heroes race to complete quests and earn victory points. To do so, they battle monsters and draw cards presenting them with obstacles and opportunities. They are able to help and hinder each other in their quests, but when the game ends, the hero with the most victory points, a measure of great feats performed and glory gained, is crowned the sole victor. Geralt of Rivia, Monster Slayer, Triss Merigold, Cunning Sorceress, Yarpin Zigrin, Dwarven Warrior, and Dandelion, Roguish Bard. Players assume the roles of these four distinct characters from the Witcher franchise. Do you demonstrate your physical strength, conjure a powerful spell, or try your hand at diplomacy? Each character has unique skills and multiple ways of overcoming obstacles but you must decide which approach to take each time you play. As Geralt, you can bring enemies around to your point of view with a sword. Or, as Dandelion, bribe them with gold and threaten to call on powerful friends. If a situation calls for strength in numbers, Yarpen has his own fellowship of dwarves at his command. And Triss can rely on her expert magical skills to protect her. Each of the four characters has their own skill set, so you'll experience the world of the Witcher differently depending on which character you choose to play. Their individual strengths are represented on their own custom dice. Triss, for example, comes with a die that allows her to cast spells in battle, while Geralt's dice focus on brute force. Combined with each hero's own dice, the battle dice give all characters the potential to defeat any creature that stands in their path. Each character also has his own deck of development cards, so each time you play, you can explore different strategies. For example, when playing as Geralt of Rivia, you can specialize in brewing and using combat potions or focus on casting powerful Witcher signs. Performing actions is the primary means by which heroes travel around the world, investigate possible leads, and complete quests. To perform an action, the hero takes one of his action tokens and places it in an open action space on his hero sheet. Then he executes the action as described. To travel, the player moves his hero figure along one or two routes. He places his figure in one of the open spaces at the destination location and receives lead tokens matching the number and one of the colors shown in his space. To investigate, the player chooses any one investigation deck, draws its top card, reads the text aloud and resolves its effects. Investigating yields various types of encounters, including battles and gaining leads. To develop, the player draws the top two cards of his development deck and chooses one to keep, placing it face up near his hero sheet. Then he places the other card face down at the bottom of his development deck. To rest, the player removes either two minor wound tokens or one severe wound token from his hero sheet.
Each hero also has a special action shown on his hero sheet. These actions are unique to each individual hero. Geralt can brew a potion for later. Triss is able to prepare her spells for future use. Dandelion can sing a far-fetched tale to earn a few coins. And Yarpen is ready to command his band of companions to assist him in various ways. Action spaces can contain either an action token or a wound token. An action space is open if it does not contain a token. Conversely, an action space is occupied if it contains one of these tokens. There are two different types of wounds, minor wounds and severe wounds. Each wound token is double-sided, with each type of wound shown on one of the sides. When a hero suffers a wound, he places the wound token on an open woundable space on his hero sheet with the appropriate side up. While a wound token occupies an action space, the hero cannot place his action token in that action space, thus preventing the hero from performing that action. A hero can remove wounds from his hero sheet in several ways, including performing the rest action, entering a location with a heart icon and some other card effects. There are three types of quest cards, combat, magic, and diplomacy. Each hero can only draw from the deck indicated on his hero sheet. Some quests require gold or proof tokens, some require fighting battles, and others require various miscellaneous tasks. One quest card is kept face up at all times. This card shows the main quest, side quest, and support objectives for the player's current quest and its consequences, good and bad, of completing them. The main quest is described on top of the quest card. To complete it, you must acquire proof tokens, usually by exchanging lead tokens. These can be had by traveling or by using the investigate action to draw a card and resolve its effects. Leads can be exchanged for proof tokens according to the exchange rate listed on each hero sheet. For example, to complete the main quest on the Crow Pass Red Quest Card, a player must acquire two Red Proof Tokens, travel to Tretagor, and slay an overgrown Wyvern. A player can complete the quest only if he is currently in the main quest location. Side quests earn you additional VP at the cost of extra resources or visiting an additional location. For example, the side quests for the Crow Pass Quest require that the hero travel to Maribor to obtain a protective ointment and spend four gold tokens to pay some peasants for their help. Then the player places common markers on the bottom of the quest card to indicate that the quests have been completed. Support quests are a bit different. They can only be completed by other players, yielding VP for both players involved. When a hero completes any quest, be it main quest, side quest, or support, he immediately scores the VP for this quest, and then, in the case of the main quest, he resolves its consequences. In the Crow Pass quest example, Geralt would receive 8 VP for completing the main quest. Geralt adds the VP for the completed quests to his score and moves his marker along the victory track. Next, he must resolve the consequences of completing the quest. In this case, Geralt receives one good fortune card and two gold. But the beast's venom leaves him wounded, so he will most likely have to rest during the following turn. Finally, he draws the two top quest cards from his hero's quest deck and chooses one to keep as his new quest, returning the other. After a player resolves his two actions, he checks the obstacle zones on the side of the board to see if there are any obstacles in his region. If there is an obstacle in his region, he must deal with it. Along their journey, our heroes will encounter various obstacles. One of them is Foul Fate. Foul Fate tokens can appear on hero sheets as well as in obstacle zones. While occupying a Foul Fate space on a hero sheet, the token affects the adjacent action space to the right. If a hero performs that action, he discards the token and resolves one Foul Fate card. 
Foul fate tokens in an obstacle zone affect the corresponding region. So if there is a foul fate token in his region at the end of his turn, the player must resolve one foul fate card. He must also resolve a foul fate card if he moves along two routes. Monsters are another type of obstacle. Certain game effects spawn monsters on the board face down. Each obstacle zone can contain any number of monster tokens. When a hero encounters a face down monster token, he flips it face up to discover which monster he will fight against in battle. If the hero defeats the monster, it is removed from the board and returned to the bottom of its stack. If the hero does not defeat the monster, then its token remains face up in its current obstacle zone. Battles occur when the hero encounters an enemy, which can appear as an effect on an investigation card, one of the quests on a quest card, or a monster encounter. To fight a battle, the hero first resolves any before rolling effects. Then he takes the battle dice along with his hero dice and rolls them. He totals the number of each symbol rolled, adjusts for any modifiers used, and then resolves the battle's outcome. Geralt encounters a siren. Then he rolls the three white battle dice along with his three red hero dice. He obtains the following results. Three swords, one shield, one witcher sign, and one dodge. Geralt spends the witcher sign result to trigger the effect on his R development card, which causes each sword symbol to produce one extra sword result. He also spends one dodge, which subtracts one sword result and adds one shield result. After adjusting for these modifications, his final results are five swords and two shields, just enough to succeed against the Siren in both attack and defense. He did not fail his defense, so he ignores that effect. Then, because his attack was successful, he defeats the Siren. He adds the VP gain to his total, removes the Siren from the board, and places it at the bottom of the Silver Monster stack. When a player completes his third quest, the remaining players each have one more turn, after which the game ends. The player with the most victory points wins the game. The Witcher is a game offering unique experience in a dark and dangerous fantasy world. With four different characters and multiple strategies for winning, each game will be challenging and your skills will be put to the test. Choose your friends and enemies wisely and use magic, cunning or brute force to overcome any obstacle on your path.